Now, this little bottle is the Verdigris water soluble paint from Dirty Down. Now, this is the same paint range as the Rust Effect paint that we looked at previously. But is this stuff going to be as good? Well, today we're going to find out. We're going to put it through its paces, we're going to test it, and we're going to find what is good about it, what is not so good about it, and also some things that really surprised me when I started trying this stuff out. So verdigris is a bright bluish greeny kind of encrustation or patina. So it is basically the corrosion of brass or copper based metals. So I've selected this piece of terrain. Now this is from the Kill Team Octaria set by Games Workshop. Now the reason I chose this one is that it's got lots of different surfaces, different things we can try out and test. Now this hatch on the top is comparatively small but it's got a lot of detail in there. But on the flip side, this kind of pressure vessel here is a lot flatter, it's got a lot flatter surface. Now verdigris on a copper roof, for example, goes a very bright and vibrant or turquoisey kind of colour. I wonder if it'll do that on this. Now going by Dirty Down themselves, this product works best over a matte surface rather than a shiny metallic one. And also if you look at that real world patina on brass and copper and stuff, it kind of goes a very dark brown kind of colour first, and then it develops that verdigris patina. Now this is the German camouflage black brown by Vallejo and I'll put that down as a base coat. Now this is also the same stuff I use for the Dirty Down Rust and that works really well. So let's see how it translates across. And the verdigris is corrosion and therefore as water drips down it, it takes those verdigris particles and stain other areas as well. So that's why I'm going to paint this other tank in kind of a light grey kind of colour because I want to see how this stuff reacts over other colours and if you can use it for streaking effects, for example. Now, painting the rest of this is going to take a little bit of time. So with the magic of YouTube, I've now painted up the rest of the model. I am really interested to see how this stuff is actually going to react. So with all of the water-soluble, dirty down range, you need to give it a really good stir. The pigment can settle in the bottom, and it does have a little ball bearing in it to help mix it all up. But especially the first time, you may want to get a stirrer in there and really get down to the bottom to get all that pigment back up and mixed in with the rest of the paint. Now it does work by a chemical reaction, so you do not want any water inside the bottle because that can stop it working at all. Likewise, the bottle itself, as well as the surface you're putting on, should be fairly warm as well. At least like a good, solid, nice, warm room temperature. Now according to the instructions, if you do get it on your skin, for example, you just need to wash it off really well. But the main thing with this is that it does react with water. So therefore you really do not want to get it in your eyes or swallow it. And that may sound a bit daft, but for those of us who lick or shape the brush in the corner of your mouth as a habit, that could easily be done. So just be careful of that one. Now at least with the instructions on the bottle, it says that if you want a darker colour then to do it in the thicker layers. If you want it in a very a much a lighter colours, a lot thinner layers, but also a rust patina is very different to a verdigris patina. Whereas a verdigris tends to be more in streaks where the water's running off. So what I'm gonna try and do, which is a complete experiment, I haven't tried this before, is try and do small streaks in layers around this kind of cupola and see how that comes out. Now this stuff dries really, really fast on the brush, arguably even faster than the Dirty Down Rust did. And it's really kind of gunking up my brush. So I'm able to wash and dry it a couple of times whilst I'm working with this model. But then again, it's now midsummer and it's really warm. So <laughs> to be fair, that might have something to do with it. Now I'm gonna try this streaking fix and see how it reacts with water. So I'm gonna put some around the base of this rim here and then try and streak it down. And that's gone on quite thick, quite solid. So I'm gonna try, so I'm gonna use some water and see what effect that has. Well, looking at it, it's, it tends to be more taking off completely rather than l watering it down, which is interesting. Now, what, now looking at it so far, I'm fairly happy with that hatch. It's it's not a really crazy strong effect, but it's a lot more subtle and it allows you to see the detail in it. But looking at the cupola, it's kind of got a, just a matte black. There's a little bit of blue in there, but nothing. No, it's nowhere near what I would expect. Hmm. I think I'm gonna leave this overnight and come back to it in the morning and see how it looks then. Okay, so I've now left it overnight. There's not a huge change from that initial reaction we had last night. It looks, it looks okay right now, but not amazing. So I had an idea. Let's try something else. So first of all, I'm going to repaint over it with that dark brown. 
but also I want to try this opportunity to test it out over some metallic. So I'm going to use the copper from the Vallejo Model Air range and using a medium dry brush. Now this is from the Rosemary Co range and I think that would be the ideal size for the job we have in hand. So it's just dry brushing that on already, it's already looking better. But can I dry brush over the dirty down verdigris? Let's try it out on the hatch. Now bear in mind this is water based acrylic paint going over the top of the dirty down verdigris. And with the dry brush it's picking out these little highlights really really nicely. And that's also adding in some contrast and some definition as well which is also really nice. Now on the body of the vessel, I didn't repaint it. So I've got a little bit of verdigris on there, a little bit of brown. So let's see how that responds to that coppery dry brush. So moving back to that dome, so I've now got a dark brown with a dry brush copper over the top of that. Let's very thinly apply the dirty down verdigris and see how that reacts over that, that matte and metallic kind of base. Now I want it to be quite bright because if you have a because if you have a, a very exposed roof made out of copper, it, it goes a really bright verdigris colour. So I'm gonna try and keep the layer as thin as I can. Now one key consideration is gonna be the price of this stuff. Now this video is not sponsored by anybody and this little bottle I bought myself from a company here in the UK for eight pound and seven pence which I believe at time of filming is about $9.95 US. So credit where credit is due. Even with shipping, that's not a bad price compared to where I've seen it elsewhere, which has been going for almost some silly money. Now, if you wanna check out the current prices, I've put a link down in the description for you. So having let that dry, let's look at how it came out. Now I found this stuff a lot more difficult to manipulate and to get the different effects and stuff than the dirty down rust was. So it's not better or worse, it's just different. You try and get your head around it. Now on the overall dome, it's got a bit of an effect there, but it's not what I was expecting at all. Whereas on the body of this kind of pressure vessel, that looks really cool. That dark brown base with the copper dry brushed over the top of it and the verdigris, it looks really cool. Now looking at it, I think this is because it's a very dimply surface, there's a lot more texture to it. It's not a smooth surface. Therefore the verdigris can kind of pull a little bit and you get that effect far more strongly, and it looks quite natural. On the hatch itself, it's not, an, it's not an overpowering effect, but it looks really realistic, it looks quite nice. There's a lot of texture in there, and especially with the dry brushing that copper over the top, that's quite a nice effect. So in summary, it dries on the brush extremely quickly. It is harder to manipulate than the Dirty Down Rust, but you can get some really amazing effects with it. However, point to note, on this test, it appears that it struggles a bit on flat surfaces, but it excels far greater when it's on a, a battered surface or on a surface which has got lots of fine detail. That's where this stuff kind of wins out, I think. However, I think there's more we can do with this and it needs a bit more testing. If you like that, if you found that useful, please bash that like button and share it across your social media. And I'll see you for the next project.